Now, students, last in my last lecture, I had told you that uh, the scientists who were instrumental in discovering the cell, we learned about the different mic microscopes that were used, and we learned about the cell theory and what is the meaning of the cell theory. Okay, so now we move on to the actual structure of the cell and what are the organelles which are present in the cell. Okay, so let's start with it. Now, uh, students, we all know that uh, the plant and the animal cells, they are different, okay? However, there are some common structures which both of them share. And that particular term is called as a generalized cell, okay? Now, in this generalized cell, what do you mean by a generalized cell? A generalized cell is something in which both the plant and animal cells, they share these structures. So what are these structures? these structures are nothing but the first is a cell membrane which is present in both the type of cells the second is the nucleus and the third is the cytoplasm okay so these are the common structures which are shared now um, okay uh, children can you see a pencil which is uh, moving on the slide yes ma'am okay now, if I want to highlight something, I'll just go to that point and I will use this highlighter. Okay. Now, uh, children, when we are talking about a cell, is only a cell important? No. Now, we are humans. There are so many organs inside our body, right? There's a liver, there's a heart, there's a brain. Now, all these organs, when they function together, that helps us to stay alive. That helps us to, you know, uh, gauge what all is going on in the surroundings. If any one particular organ is not working, what will happen to our body? Our body will, you know, uh, we'll fall sick. We'll not be, we uh, are not healthy if any one of the organ is not working. Similarly, each cell has different organs and those organs, they are called as organelles. What are they called children? They are called as organelles Organel. rather than calling them as organs. Okay. Why are they called organelles? Because they are very tiny as compared to the huge organs that are there inside our body. Okay. Now. Just a moment. The cell is also called. The slide is not moving. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, students, these are the parts of a plant and animal cell. Um, there are living parts here and there are non living parts. Okay, now in a, in a plant cell, the cell wall is a non-living part. Now, this non-living part, children, it is made up of cellulose. Okay, now the different types of living parts are in the cytoplasm, there is something called as endoplasmic reticulum. It is also written as a short form as ER. There's a mitochondria, there's a Golgi apparatus, there are ribosomes, there are lysosomes, there's a centrosome. Now, children, centrosome is a part which is present only in the animal cells. Plastids, plastids are present only in plant cells. The nucleus, which is surrounded by a nuclear membrane, it has a nucleoli and it has chromatin fibers. Now, children, these chromatin fibers, they will lead to the formation of chromosomes which are needed for cell division. Now, what we are going to do here as children, we are going to learn about each and every organelle in details. Okay. Now, children, just go through this plant cell. Now, students, there is a striking difference between a plant cell and an animal cell. A plant cell has a definite structure. You know, it's, uh, it's square or it's rectangular. Why is it so? Because it is surrounded by a, a cell wall. Right? Cell wall. The animal cells, they do not have a cell wall. And it's because of cell this, wall. you know, they are, you know, circular or spherical in shape. 
And that's the basic difference. Now, just go through each and every part. The outer part is called as a cell wall, cell membrane inside it. Now, children, this is the Golgi apparatus, okay? The one in the pink, right? These oval structures, they are the chloroplast. Then comes a huge vacuum. Now, children, animals or animal cell, even they have vacuoles, but they don't have such huge vacuoles. The vacuoles which are present in the animal cells, they are very small. Then is a mitochondrion. Now, children, mitochondria is a plural and a single is a mitochondrion. Then is a cytoplasm, which is common to both the animal and a plant cell. Then we have this endoplasmic reticulum. Now, children, there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum. One is a smooth endoplasmic reticulum and the other is a rough endoplasmic reticulum. Then we'll have small structures which are called as ribosomes. Now, students, the difference between a smooth and a rough endoplasmic reticulum is because when the ribosomes are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum, it is called as rough. When there are no ribosomes attached, they are called as smooth. Okay. Now, this orange structure, children, that is a nucleus, and inside is present a nucleus. Okay. Now, this is a who's doodling here? Don't do that, children. Yes. Next, we come to a animal cell. Now, children, what is lacking here is a cell wall. Okay. So we start from the outer part. The outer part is called as a cell membrane first. Then similar structures, the Golgi apparatus. Yes. Then this is the nucleus. The inside pink portion is the nucleolus. Here you have lysosomes. Can you see this structure? They are the lysosomes. We have ribosomes. Ribosomes are either attached to the endoplasmic reticulum or they are detached from it. Okay. Now, uh, children, did you see this um, difference? The vacuole in a plant cell, they were huge vacuoles, right? However, in an animal cell, there are very small vacuoles. Then a mitochondrion, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum where there are no ribosomes attached. The rough endoplasmic reticulum where you can see just tiny dots, those are the ribosomes attached to it. Then there is something different. Uh, can you see this uh, structure here? The long rods and this. This entire structure, students, the pink rods and the uh, yellow rods, they are called as centrosomes. And this is present only in an animal cell and the cytoplasm. Okay? So now, students, I'm giving you uh, a minute's time. Please go through the plant cell and the animal cell once again so that when I explain it to you, you know what I am explaining. Okay? So first, let us go to the plant cell. Everyone go through it. I'll give you 30 seconds for plant cell and 30 seconds for an animal cell. Ma'am, how to identify whether it's smooth or rough endoplasmic reticulum? See, when it is rough, here it is rough, okay? When it is rough, there are ribosomes. Can you see these ribosomes here, the small dots? When these ribosomes are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum, it is rough. When the ribosomes are not there, it is clear. Can you see these ribosomes? See, I'm highlighting here. I'm moving a pen here, an arrow. Okay, these are ribosomes. Now the ribosomes, when they are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum, they are rough. And when they are not attached, they are smooth. Okay? So, um, so rough is basically like a bit distorted. Yes. Okay. Um, so how will you differentiate between a rough and a smooth uh, endoplasmic reticulum? A rough endoplasmic reticulum is when the ribosomes are Ribos attached to it. And a smooth endoplasmic reticulum is when the ribosomes are not attached to it. That's the basic difference. Okay? Ma'am, Golgi bodies and Golgi apparatus is the same? Is the same. Is the same. And do we have an animal cell or a human cell? 
um human cells and animal cells they are mostly the same it's the only the difference is in the number of chromosomes i'll tell you the different number of chromosomes in the later slides okay did you go through both the slides children just register this in your mind so that when i'm explaining you the different structures you will come to know about it okay so now we start with the just okay so now we start with each and every cell organelle now first we come to the cell membrane this is the cell membrane okay now children in a cell membrane there are fine pores through which substances can enter and leave and a cell membrane it has selective permeability now what do you mean by selective permeable that means in selective permeable why is a cell membrane selectively permeable because only a certain substances can enter yes only a few substances can enter and those few substances if they are small they can enter however if they are huge they will not be able to enter as compared to that a cell wall which is present only in plant cells now it surrounds a cell wall surrounds the cell membrane it is made up of a non living substance which is cellulose now children here you need to remember and this is very important why is a cell membrane non living because it is composed of a non living substance which is called as cellulose and it is because of this cell wall that the plant cell gets its shape and rigidity however a cell wall is freely permeable now what does this mean when i say freely permeable that means the larger molecules can also enter however they face a barrier when they come to the cell membrane because if a cell wall is present only in a plant cell however cell membrane is present in both of them that means even though some unwanted molecules come through the cell wall they will face a barrier in the cell membrane understood children yes okay. next we move to the uh, component which is causes cytoplasm now children cytoplasm is a semi liquid substance it occupies most part of the cell within the cell membrane it is cytoplasm is inside the cell membrane now what is the color it is colorless it is partly transparent and it is watery by watery children i don't mean it you know it flows like water it is a a viscous kind of a thing not as um, the viscosity is not like water but it is semi liquid okay now it is a place where most of the chemical reactions occur now children when i'm talking about the chemical reaction which is a major chemical reaction which occurs in a cell that is respiration apart from respiration what happens there are um, this digestion which happens digestion of unwanted organelles which happens so all these chemical reactions they occur in a cell and a living cytoplasm is always in a state of movement now what do you mean by this if i place something in water will it remain stagnant no right because in water everything moves so the same applies to a cytoplasm also whatever is present in a cytoplasm suppose there is mitochondria there is golgi apparatus everything which is present in a cytoplasm is in a state of movement okay now now we come to the organelles which are present in the cytoplasm so the first organel here is the endoplasmic reticulum now children can you see a circle here yes yes ma'am is nothing but that is a nucleus now where is the endoplasmic reticulum present the endoplasmic reticulum is present in the cytoplasm however what happens here is it has one entry that means the nucleus is connected to the endoplasmic reticulum at one side and to the other side it is connected to the cell membrane okay that means it is joined to two parts one part is joined to the nucleus 
and the other part here it is joined to the cell membrane okay the outer end is connected to the cell membrane and the inner end is connected to the nuclear membrane there okay now the endoplasmic reticulum children it is so fine that its existence could only be seen with the help of a electron microscope now children if you remember in the last lecture i had told you the magnification which can be achieved with the help of an electron microscope the was how much 200000 times right that means the endoplasmic reticulum is so minute that it could be seen only through a electron microscope now children when i tell you to describe the structure doesn't it look very irregular right so yes. now looking at this we can immediately find out that it is irregular and it is double membrane okay so now children the points to remember is the endoplasmic reticulum i'll again go through it one more time so that it just fixes in your mind the one end of the endoplasmic reticulum is connected to the nucleus the other end is connected to the cell membrane okay now it is so minute that its existence could be seen only because with the help of an electron microscope and then look at the structure the structure how is the structure it is irregular and it is double membrane okay now we move to the next slide now there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum the first is the rough and the second is a smooth now when is it rough when the ribosomes are attached when is it smooth when the ribosomes are not attached to it okay now what is the function of a endoplasmic reticulum it is just a it provides support to the cell and it is a pathway for the distribution of materials from one part of the cell to the other now what does this mean this means that if there are some components now children the nucleus is one of the most essential parts of a cell like how the brain is to a human body in the same way the nucleus is one of the most important parts of the cell when i say that for the cell to function this nucleus should also get energy how is it going to get energy all the materials which are needed by the nucleus will be passed to the nucleus through what they will be passed through this endoplasmic reticulum clear everyone children yes okay now we come to the ribosomes the ribosomes children this is uh, students can you see the structure on the right hand side yes this is one ribosome now when this ribosome gets attached to the endoplasmic reticulum it gives the characteristic of being rough okay now what are ribosomes they are small granules which are either free or are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum i'll go through the this slide once again now students see these are the ribosomes now these ribosomes they are either freely suspended in the cytoplasm yes or they are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum okay now what well, what exactly is the function of a ribosome a ribosome is where the protein synthesis happens now students what is the importance of proteins here everything in your body it needs proteins because proteins is also a source of energy and it is needed for making of the different organelles now for example your skin what is your skin your skin is a protein the internal organs what are they they are all made up of proteins your hair your hair is a protein that means each and every organ inside your body is made up of proteins so that means what does this mean even the organelles which they say these all organelles are made up of proteins 
So where is the proteins going to come from? The proteins are going to come from the ribosomes because the ribosomes are of site where the protein synthesis will take place. And it is because of these proteins that the different organelles are being made. Okay. Now, next, we come uh, to the structure, which is called as mitochondria. I have, uh, you know, tried, uh, this is a shape of a mitochondria here. Now, how does this look like? It is spherical or it can be rod or thread-like bodies. They are double wall bags with finger like projections called cristae. Now, students, can you see this? This is the outer membrane and this is the inner membrane, right? And these structures here, these perforations, they are called as what are they called as cristae. Now, between the membrane, students, between the outer and the inner membrane, there is something which is called as a intermembrane space right and children why is the mitochondria very important because it is the site where actual respiration takes place and if you remember children the equation of respiration what happens in respiration students atp is glucose generated. yes glucose is broken down into atp and because of atp what happens you get energy so where does this happen? This happens in the mitochondria. And it is because of this, it is called as the powerhouse of the cell. Okay. So children, two very important organelles. One is the ribosome. Why are ribosomes important? Because it is the site for the production of proteins. Why are proteins important? Because every organel, every organ, it is made up of protein. Right? The second most important is mitochondria because everything, all the organs, they need energy. Where is this energy going to come from? This energy is going to come from the process of respiration, which is a breakdown of glucose to release ATP. And where does this happen? This happens in a mitochondria. And it's because of this, they are called as the powerhouse of the cells. Now students, when I'm using these terminologies, factories of protein synthesis or powerhouse of the cell, you know, you might get questions like, uh, which is the organelle which is called as the powerhouse of the cell? You should be able to tell. Right? Mitochondria. Mitochondria. Now, which is the organelle which is the site for protein synthesis? You should be able to tell. Ribosomes. 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 Clear everyone, Ribosomes. children? Do yes, I need to explain anything? Yes, ma'am. Should I proceed? Ma'am, I had a Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma'am. Great. Now, we come to the next organelle, which is called as the Golgi apparatus. This is a Golgi apparatus. Children, doesn't this look something similar to a endoplasmic reticulum? Yes, yes ma'am. Something like yeah. that. It occurs in the form of filaments, granules or rods. It is supposed to be originated from the endoplasmic reticulum, okay? But it is not endoplasmic reticulum. It is located near the nucleus. It consists of a hollow tubular structures concerned with secretions of the cells, including the enzymes, hormones, etc. So where are the hormones coming from? They are coming from the Golgi apparatus. Where are the enzymes coming from? They are coming from the Golgi apparatus. Okay, children. Next, yes. now we come to another important structure which is called as the lysosomes. Now, um, students, this is a structure, a spherical structure of a lysosome. Now, can you see this? These are hydrolytic enzymes. Now, children, why does a lysosome, what is the main function of a lysosome? Now, students, as you know that cells yes. die but cells are getting regenerated again. So what happens about the dead cells? Where do they go? So the dead cells, they are dissolved or they are destroyed inside a lysosome. Okay. Now, who is doing this? Okay. So lysosomes, they contain digestive enzymes. 
they destroy and digest foreign substances around them and it digests stored foods during starvation of the cells. What do you mean by this? You know, sometimes students, they don't eat food for a long time. But does that mean you're going to die? No, because there is fat inside your body. There are calories inside your body. Now, in times of starvation, what is happening is this fat is being utilized to regenerate the energy. And who, wh where does it happen? It happens inside the lysosome because it digests stored food during starvation of a cell. Now, they are called as suicide bags because the damaged cells are rapidly destroyed or they are dissolved here. And who is dissolving them? These hydrolytic enzymes which are present inside a lysosome, they are, uh, you know, uh, destroying or they are dissolving the cells. Okay. So students, another terminology, which, which is the organelle which are called as the suicidal bags? It is the lysosome. Okay. Great. Now we move on to a very important organelle which is a centrosome and centrioles. Now students, uh, can you see the structure? There are two structures which are at right angle to each other. Can you see this children? Yes? So this entire structure students is called as a centrosome. And a oh. peculiar feature about a feature about a centrosome is that it is present only in the animal cells. Now, uh, students, when I'm talking about the entire centrosome, uh, this part which is outside, those are the centrioles. Okay, and these centrioles, can you see these rod-like structure, students? They yes. are made yes. of yes, yes, they are microtubules. Okay, so this circular kind of a structure that is a centriole and these rod like structures, they are called as the microtubules. Now children, you know, um, to make you understand the importance about the centrosomes and the centrioles is, um, you have not gone through it. If possible, I'll try to upload a video to actually show you centrosomes and centrioles. They are very important during cell division. Because during cell division, children, you know what happens? The chromosomes, they are, you know, they have to go into two different cells. And for them to go into two different cells, they need a framework. So it is these centrosomes and centrioles with, uh, which they will perform the framework. Like, you know what happens? They are like a web. And on those web, they are the chromosomes are arranged on them. And when the chromosomes are arranged, then when a cell divides, the chromosomes will go to two different cells. So who does that? The centrosomes and the centrioles will do it. Okay. So they are very important when cell division is involved. Okay. Next, we come to the plastids. Students, this is very interesting because plastids, they are found only in the plant cells. One minute. Okay. Ma'am, I have a doubt. Yes. Um, the uh, centrosomes are only present in the animal cell. Yes. So, what have, who, uh, which organelles are responsible in the cell division of the plant cell? In the plant cells, there are some different or, uh, organelles, which we'll be doing it later when I tell you about it. Okay. Right now, yeah. uh, students, we are not, you know, we are not uh, talking about the cell division because cell division. As a concept, it is very vast. You know, there can be two or three chapters alone on a cell division. There are different phases in a cell division. There is this S phase, there is this M phase, which, you know, it, it's very complicated. So, you know, when we, we meet in the school, I'll definitely tell you about it because it needs, I need to be present uh, in front of you to explain it. The centrosomes are present in human cells also. The centrosomes are present in human cells also. Yes. Centrosomes are present in even in plant cells also they are present children. It does not mean that in plant cells, but we'll talk about it later. Okay? Mama, I have some doubts. Can I ask? Yes. Yeah, some some like, uh, can like substances leave through the cell membrane? 
substances can leave yes they can leave i am uh, like uh, what what is an organelle ha huh? what do you mean by an organelle organelle is something like a organ like how we inside have of organs of inside a body there is a heart there is a brain there is a liver there is a pancreas the same way there are organelle in a cell they are not as huge as organs so they are called as organelle because they are very minute but when a cell functions only when many cells come together they can form a organ right so for that yeah. cell to function what is important for it those small organelles are important like one minute and uh, mom one thing like yes. you told endoplasmic reticulum supplies energy to the nucleus okay to the to the nucleus of other cells huh to to, to the nucleus to the nucleus the right. NC, each cell will have a endoplasmic reticulum of its own so it is responsible so mom do endoplasmic reticulum also contain nucleus endoplasmic no a cell will have only oh. one nucleus okay only one nucleus one cell like how you have only one brain do you have two or three brains no right we have only one brain so a cell will have only one nucleus and a one endoplasmic reticulum yes oh, i have a doubt i have a doubt ma'am ma'am even i have a doubt yes ma'am uh, ma'am i had a doubt yes. when you told about the leuco uh, leuco leukocytes whatever ha huh? One minute. I'm muted himself. Ma'am, oh, over there. Ma'am, over there. Uh, you told the uh, about lysosomes. Yeah, ma'am, lysosomes, ma'am. Ah. Over there, you told they de uh, destroy the damaged cells. Hmm. So, how do you differentiate between a damaged cell and a non-damaged cell? How do you know that whether the cell is damaged or not? Uh, some see. Oh. I'll Ma'am. tell you in context of a human being. Okay, now what happens when the heart stops functioning? A person dies. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So in the same way, if the nucleus is not functioning, what will happen to the cell? The cell will die. Cell will. Yes, That's ma'am. That is the damaged cell. So when a you know when a cell gets damaged, children, the outer structure. uh the outer structure it starts shrinking because if the nucleus is not in place what will happen that affects the entire cell so when it affects the entire cell maybe the shape changes and then what will happen to that cell the lysosomes which are present in that cell will digest that cell that will dissolve uh, me ma'am okay ma'am okay ma'am ma'am new cells are quickly produced ha huh? and then and then the new cells are quickly produced Huh? yes the new cells will be produced by cell division because as i told you earlier the cells are dying but the cells are also being produced by a process which is called as cell division okay ma'am i have a doubt yes about uh, centrosomes yes that uh, the what the microtubules uh, like together form the centrosomes right hmm. and uh, in centrosomes what is the function of centrioles in that in the centrioles now um, one minute let me see if i can uh, one what is the function of plastids what is the the multiple function plastids i still haven't uh, you know so gone through that first i'll just uh, try to solve solve the doubt for uh, the centrioles but Mom, can I ask you something? Yes, darling. Tell me. Uh, Mom, I have a doubt in the Golgi body. I didn't get it. In the, but I want to tell you about the centrioles. Stop singing. I'll draw here only. Mom, can you just uh go to the Golgi body slide uh, for yeah? For a First, I'll tell you about the centrioles, and then I'll go to the Golgi body. Yeah. One minute. Now, uh. See. Now, can you see this blue thing which I'm drawing? Yeah. Okay. Now, children, what is happening is this is these are the microfilaments. Okay, and there are two structures like this, circular structures like this. They are the. Uh, they are the centrioles. 
So these are the centrioles and these are the microfilaments. Now what happens children during cell division, the chromosomes, these are the chromosomes. Okay, the chromosomes will arrange on the microfilaments like this. Okay, so these are the uh, microtubules. Can you see this? And these two circles, they are the centrioles. Okay, now when uh, cell division occurs, children, what will happen? This one part is taken up by one cell, and this part is taken up by the other cell. Okay, so this is how cell division occurs. I think, uh, is this clear? Where are the cells? Ma'am, I did, ma yes, I did ma not understand. Uh, okay, by the Me neither. Uh, okay. Uh, can you see this, children? One minute. I have highlighted it here. Can you see this? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So these are the centrioles and these rod shapes. What are they, children? Microtubules. Microtubules. Now, what happens? These rod shape, this part, they go like this in a cell division. That's the reason, children, I told you, don't get too much into the details. You will get confused. Now, when cell division occurs, these are the centrioles. These are the microfilaments. This is how they are organized. And the chromosomes are here. Okay. These are the chromosomes here. And this is how a cell divides. The chromosomes, they are split apart. Okay. When I tell you the number of chromosomes that each cell has. These chromosomes will go here. Okay. And then what happens? There is a membrane which forms around this. So this is one cell and this is the other cell. That? Okay. Who is doing this? Children. <laughs> Okay. What do you mean uh, by chromosome? That's the reason, children, I told you it is a bit complicated. We'll come to this. I coming to uh, know about it in the 10th standard. However, I, I'll, I will explain it to you later. First, let me finish the presentation. I'll definitely explain it to you. And if possible, I'll try to you know upload a video so that it will be easier for you to understand. Okay. Ma'am, so it's just that the membrane does the cell division yes anyone had a doubt on golgi apparatus me me someone had a doubt on golgi what are what are chromosomes huh what are chromosomes chromosomes i'm going to tell you at uh, towards the uh, latter part of the presentation mm -hmm. who had a doubt on golgi apparatus me me huh. okay so let me proceed. Ma'am, okay. I had doubt. Yes, tell me, darling. Yeah, I didn't get what you what you taught according uh, about the Golgi apparatus. I didn't get. You. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, can you see this Golgi apparatus here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, does this look similar like a uh, endoplasmic okay. reticulum? Somewhat similar. Yes. yes. Okay. Now. Uh, what what it, it is? See, it is located, a Golgi apparatus is somewhat similar to an endoplasmic reticulum, but it is not an endoplasmic reticulum. It is supposed to be originated from the endoplasmic reticulum and hence it has a structure like this. Where is it located? Mm -hmm. It is located near the nucleus. Now, what, what does it do? It is helping with the secretions of the cells, <coughs> including enzymes, including hormones. Now, what do you mean by this? What is the function? Now, children, when I talk about respiration, you all know about respiration, children? Yes? In respiration, what happens? Glucose is broken down to give you a lot of energy. But do you think it is a very simple uh, chemical reaction? Will it not no. need any enzymes? It will need enzymes, right? So who is creating, who is, uh, you know, responsible for giving those enzymes to the cells? It is the Golgi apparatus. Golgi apparatus. Because it is producing enzymes. It is producing hormones. Now, let me tell you, 
um, let me compare this with a human body. In a human body, when you eat food, where does it go? It goes into the stomach, right? In the stomach, there are different gastric juices. Now, what do these juices do? They will break down the food. So, what are these gastric juices? The gastric juices are nothing but they are a combination of different enzymes. Then, the partially digested food will go to the intestine. In the intestine or in the pancreas, there are some secretions of the pancreas and the liver which are coming into the intestine. Oh, so what they do, they do, they will help in the digestion of the food. And for the digestion of the food, what is needed? Enzymes and enzymes. So the same process is done. Who is doing this? The same process is done by the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus is responsible for, uh, you know, uh, for secreting all the enzymes, for secreting the hormones which is needed for the cell to function. Am I clear? Uh, ma'am, can you go to ma'am? Can you go to endoplasmic reticulum? I had a doubt in that. Yeah. Yes. Ma'am. Uh, huh. so what what is the outer part? What the is the outer, outer part, part like? Here. Can you see this part? One minute. <clears throat> this is the outer part. I am highlighting it. Okay. This is the outer part and this is the inner part. Why is this the inner part? Because <laughs> nucleus is located inside. And cell membrane... So the inner part of that little bowl-like structure. What, Ali? The, the inner part of the little bowl-like structure. The inner part, this is the inner part of the uh, cell, but this is a nucleus. I'll show it to you again. One minute. <laughs> okay. Now see, children, the cell, animal cell will have only one nucleus, okay? So, when I am saying, uh, please stop counting, who is doing this? Please don't do it. Uh, see, this is the cell, this is the nucleus, okay? So, this part, I'll draw it here. This is the inner part of the endoplasmic reticulum. And this is the outer part. Okay. So this is in close proximity with the cell membrane. And this inner yes. part is in close proximity to the nucleus. Am I clear? Yes, ma'am. Oh. So yes, ma yellow, yellow is the uh, inner part. Uh, this is called as the nucleoplasm child. Okay. Now, like we have the nucleoplasm in the cell. The nucleus is a different organelle, right? Can you see that the nucleus is larger as compared to the different organelles? So, this nucleus will have its own set of organelles. It will have its own Out of that, one is called as a nucleoplasm. Okay, so this have a doubt. is nothing but it is a nucleoplasm. Okay. Any more questions, children? Yeah, ma'am, I have a doubt. Yes. Ma'am, I have a doubt. Yes, tell me. Ma'am, what are those uh, ribosomes for? What are those? Yeah. Ribosomes. Ribosomes are protein. for protein. Ribosomes. Okay, I had told you like how each and every tissue, it is made up of proteins. Endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, a vacuole, centrioles, everything is made up of proteins. So where are the proteins going to come from? In the right. We are going to, they don't produce it actually. They are the sites where protein synthesis happens. So this proteins which are uh, produced on the, uh, the endoplasmic reticulum, this will lead to the formation of the new organelle. Ma'am. Ma'am. Yes. Ma'am. Am I added out? Yes. Yes, come here. Ma'am, uh, uh, ma both body apparatus and ribosomes uh, uh, secrete digestive food enzymes. Uh, come here, yeah. Uh, voice is not audible. It was breaking in between. Yes. Ma'am, both body apparatus and ribosomes uh, secrete digestive enzymes. 
I could not listen. I could not hear you. Both the Golgi apparatus and the digestive. Ah. Both of them secrete digestive enzymes. I could not understand, darling. Can no, you? She's yeah. saying both of them secrete digestive enzymes. She's saying that. Huh? Both, both of them secrete them. digestive enzymes. No. Only this one. Lysosomes will secrete the digestive uh, or the enzymes. Where the Ma'am. The dead cells which are there, they will get digested. Um, and the Shishir, ma'am. Are secreted. Shishir, ma'am. Shishir, ma'am. By any other organelle, it is needed for the functioning of the cell. Ma'am, I have a doubt. Yes. Ma'am, what does leucoplast do? Clear the mute color. Leucoplast. Leucoplast. They are form of a plastids. I'm going to tell this, but right now I'm solving the doubts about the other organelles. Okay. Mama didn't. I still didn't get the location of the inner part of the uh, endoplasmic reticulum. Inner part of the endoplasmic reticulum. What happened? Like I don't know. I I don't know where it is. Like where it? I didn't get what. I don't. I didn't get where it is. But, see. Can you see this nucleus? Yes. yes. This is the cell membrane. Sir, sir. Okay. Okay. Now this is the endoplasmic reticulum. Can you yes. see it here? Yes. A Maggie-like yes, structure. Yeah. Yes. Now, when <clears throat> this part, this part is the inner part of the endoplasmic reticulum. Why? Because it is connected to the nucleus. This. Is the outer part of the endoplasmic reticulum? Why? Because. Mom, uh, huh. So, ma'am, the endoplasmic reticulum extends in a tube form into the nucleus. Huh? It. So the endoplasmic reticulum extends into like a tube form into the nucleus. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Oh. Okay. okay. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, is there a difference in the function of smooth and rough endoplasmic reticulum? Yes. In the smooth reticulum, endoplasmic reticulum, children, there are no ribosomes attached to it, so they will not be the uh, site. No, ma'am. But the, what is the difference in function? What is the, the difference in function, function. between the smooth and? See, the endoplasmic reticulum, children, it has to be present because whenever a cell needs proteins, whenever a cell has to make different organelles, the ribosomes which are scattered here. Right, they have to go and attach to the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so the function is of the endoplasmic reticulum is to give, uh, uh, is is to be a base, is to be a structure on which the ribosomes can attach. So where the ribosomes are attached, it is called as rough. Where the ribosomes are not attached, it is called as smooth. So function is the same. Shishir, ma'am. Ma'am, function is the same. Ma'am. Just as a supportive framework for the ribosomes okay. to attach to. Listen, uh, do we type here? Is that okay? If you uh, I just have to confirm one thing. Yes. Uh, so un the only difference between Golgi apparatus and uh, endoplasmic reticulum is uh, that Golgi app uh, Golgi apparatus secretes uh, hormones, right? Yes, enzymes and hormones which are needed for the cell. So, uh, so, like the other thing, uh, which is, uh, so, so, uh, lysosomes. So, so lysosomes secrete enzymes for digestive purposes also. Lysosomes, they will uh, secrete the enzymes which are needed to digest the unwanted components of the cell. And uh, what the, what's the function of the the uh, Golgi apparatus? The Golgi apparatus uh, will secrete the enzymes which are needed for the functioning of the cell. Like, for example, respiration. The respiration needs a lot of enzymes. We just know vaguely what a respiration, how a respiration occurs. Okay, the glucose is broken down to ATP, but it is not that simple, children. There are hundreds of enzymes which are needed for that single process to occur. So who will do that? Golgi apparatus. That means, children, just make okay. it very simple. Golgi apparatus will lead to the production of enzymes which are needed for the chemical processes inside the cell. Only it is so Golgi apparatus can even be used for digestion. Cell functions. But what will a lysosome do if a cell is not functioning? Is there any need for that cell? So no. when there is no need for that cell, who will digest that cell? The enzymes of the lysosome, lysosome will digest that cell. 
ये गोल्गे पैरेटस कैन इवन बी यूज्ड फॉर डाइजेशन व्हिच वन गोल्गे पैरेटस इट कैन नो दैट कैन नॉट बी यूज्ड फॉर डाइजेशन दैट विल नीड दैट इज नीडेड ओनली टू प्रोड्यूस एंजाइम्स व्हिच आर नीडेड फॉर द प्रोसेसेस ऑफ अ सेल सो फॉर डाइजेशन ऑफ अ सेल गोल्गे पैरेटस कैन प्रोड्यूस एंजाइम्स no when see when uh, arya when you are saying digestion of a cell when i'm saying digestion of a cell that means the cell is not functioning and the cell is dead and when the cell is dead the lysosomes so not lysosomes then no golgi pyrimidine digestion for so food digestion for food digestion for food digestion yes that's what i'm saying for food digestion this golgi apparatus will produce different enzymes which is needed for the cell for example in the intestine there are different enzymes there is trypsin there is erythrin there is sucrin there is lactase who will produce that the needed one golgi apparatus. apparatus understood now thank you ma'am okay thank you ma'am yes and um, can you share this ppt on the group uh you want the ppt uh, but i guess so uh, you know everything uh, what you can do is we have sent a snapshot of the uh, chapter you can go through it whatever i have written here i have taken it from the chapter itself okay, ma'am okay. ma'am why are the golgi apparatus called the delivery system of the cell it is called as a delivery system because it delivers the enzymes where it is needed for example if a mitochondria is needing a particular enzyme for the respiration to occur who is going to do it the golgi apparatus golgi apparatus and it will deliver it to the mitochondria thank you ma'am so the golgi in the chart is the endocrine system of the cell let me uh... ma'am yes sir golgi apparatus is the golgi apparatus the lysosome i am not understanding Ma'am, uh, yes. I'm kind of plant. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm listening to you. Tell. Ma'am, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, so is the Golgi apparatus like a endocrine system for the cell? Yeah, you can say that. You can put that. Yes. uh children can i move forward yes ma'am okay yes ma'am yes uh, ma'am we just uh, ma go to it okay now we come to the plasma ma'am i have a doubt ma'am yes yes ma'am uh, can a plant cell survive without lysosomes can a plant cell survive without lysosomes without lysosomes mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it um, can survive without lysosomes but you know child what will happen see there are some uh, elements which are not needed and if they are just uh, inside the cells it might turn toxic for the cells so here the function of the lysosome comes that all the unwanted substances if they are digested by the lysosome the cell is you know it is um, it is healthy otherwise the cell is not healthy so that is where the function of a lysosome is very important Ma'am, why don't the free ribosomes attach to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum? See, uh, because uh, students, the thing is, for each and every chemical reaction, you need energy. Okay, but if you just uh, spend energy on unwanted things, what will happen? Whenever something important is needed, I'll try to correlate this with your own health. Now, uh, you have to participate in a running competition, right? now for that competition when you need to save your energy if your competition is at 10 o'clock in the morning and right from 8 o'clock you practice practice and practice by the time the it's 10 o'clock you are exhausted so much that you don't have the energy to run what will happen will you be able to perform to your best no so for that reason the ribosomes are attached only the ones only if new organelles have to be produced only that much amount of uh, you know space for protein synthesis is needed if you don't need it the ribosomes will not be attached to the endoplasmic reticulum because unless what if uh, atp is being can you ask the because for each and every process which is happening inside your body energy is needed so unnecessarily the cell will not spend energy understood 
ma'am what are ribosomes attached to smooth uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum when ribosomes attached to smooth endoplasmic reticulum it will get changed to rough endoplasmic reticulum Even if one ribosome attached, does it uh, is it considered as uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum? Yeah, that part will be considered as rough. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, uh, so I have a doubt in plastids. Yes. So, if, uh, so the plastids uh, do they exist only in one color? No. no. That's what I'm coming to it. Let me explain you this. Uh, the plastids they are found only in plant cells. They are special organelles which give shapes to the plants. Okay, for example, they give color to the plant or the leaf. Uh, there is a leucoplast which is white in color. It is a colorless plastid. It has no pigment in it. However, it stores starch. Now, just imagine um, potato cells. They have a lot of leucoplast. That's the reason they say that a potato is full of starch. so what is that starch where is it coming from it is coming from because potato cell has a lot of plastids which you know and yeah but leucoplast okay understood so leuco means from the fight it is colorless it does not have any color but what is it doing it is storing starch inside it and oh, it is oh, 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 yes. very huge and it gets all the starch from this particular plastic ma'am uh, the function of both the endoplasmic reticulum is the same right yes the see the function of the endoplasmic reticulum is basically to uh, give a site to give a place for the ribosomes to attach mm -hmm. without the endoplasmic reticulum the ribosomes can't attach mm -hmm. they just can't go to the golgi apparatus because the golgi apparatus and the endoplasmic reticulum they have almost the same uh, shape right mm -hmm. but both the ribosomes go and attach to the golgi apparatus they will attach only to the endoplasmic reticulum so endoplasmic and can ribosomes place can ribosomes right? attach to other Uh, can ribosomes attach to other things? No, they will attach only to the endoplasmic reticulum, or they will be inside. Ma'am, ma'am. Huh. So the uh, smooth uh, endoplasmic reticulum is useless. No, how can it be useless? It cannot be useless because unless and until the endoplasmic reticulum is in place, where will the ribosomes go and attach? If the ribosomes don't attach, where will the protein come from for the cell? just imagine you are just a skeleton okay uh, and uh, there are no ribosomes there are uh, in if there are no ribosomes where is the tissue going to come from right there will be no organs inside your body in the same way if there are no ribosomes the protein is not synthesized the new organs are not formed I am saying that what if the ribosomes are already attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum so the what is smooth What if the ribosomes are already attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and then there is uh, the smooth one? What is the use? See, uh, the smooth one. If just the some ribosomes attached to the endoplasmic reticulum, that becomes rough. The other is present. It's not that all uh, the entire endoplasmic reticulum is uh, being used at one single point. Okay, some of it is used, some of it is not used. Understood? Okay. Mama, yeah. what's the function of smooth endoplasmic reticulum? I'm going very slow. I'm not in a hurry. Even if we ex extend beyond uh, twelve ten, it's okay. Do you have any other lecture today? The biology is the last one, right? Yes. Yes, ma'am. So we can go beyond twelve ten also. Okay. So need not worry. Uh, let me just finish what I have started, and then I'll answer all your questions. Am I right? Okay, now we come to a uh, chromoplast. Children, when I say chromo, that means color. These are variously colored plastids. They are yellow, orange, or red, etc. Associated with flowers and fruits. Xanthophyll is one of the chromoplast. It gives yellow color. That means, children, a sunflower. What does a sunflower have? A sunflower has xanthophyll. Okay, and orange you eat orange right so what does yeah. it, orange is made up of the chromoplast carotene carotene, carotene. Right. okay now there is something which is called as anthocyanins 
These pigments are blue, violet, and purple. However, they are not associated with plastids. They remain dissolved in the cell sap and give color to the plant structure. Now, what does cell sap mean? I'll tell you later. Okay, one minute. Okay, now we come to a very important um, plastid, which is called as a chloroplast. We have learned so much about photosynthesis and leaves. They are the producers. But why are they the producers? They are the producers because they contain a very important plastid, which is called as a chloroplast. Now, chloroplast means green. Now, they contain the green pigment, chlorophyll. Chloroplast. Now, Arjun, do you know this is uh, very unique? You feel that chloroplast is only green. However, it does have different other pigments, but the quantity of chlorophyll is so much that it will mask all the other pigments which are present. Because for the light, the chlorophyll is the substance which absorbs light, right? And it is only because of this that the photosynthesis occurs. So what happens is not only the green pigment, other pigments are also necessary for the uh, photosynthesis to take place. Now, what is the function of the chloroplast? It will trap solar energy for photosynthesis. And the chloroplast also have the ability to divide as they contain DNA. Now, what is DNA? I'm going to come to it later. Ma'am, somebody is still doodling. I know. Children, please stop doing that. Okay. Now, we come to some non-living substances inside a cell. Yes? Um, there's another uh, uh, plastid, no? Gerontoplast. Uh -huh. There's another plastid, no? I could not uh, hear. Ma'am, she's is asking if there are three plastids or four plastids. There is another one, Gerontoplast. There are different kinds of plastids, uh, darling. The thing is, it but... depends on what is the color. Suppose if your flower is yellow. It will have, what will it have? It will have only xanthophyll. Xanthophyll. Okay. If your orange is uh, the orange fruit that you eat, it is orange in color. What will it have? It will have only carotene. Is there a need for any other chromoplast? No, there's no need. So it depends on what is the color. They will have only that, uh, that plastic present in it. Okay. What are the usual leaf is yellow then? What is the? It will have xanthophyll. Huh? What are the leaf is yellow then? It will have xanthophyll. It yes. is because of deficiency of some uh, yeah. nutrients and minerals. I yeah. don't understand. Deficiency Why does leaf have xanthophyll? Why does a leaf, no, no. leaf like if leaf like so if leaf is yellow in color then it has xanthophyll. A leaf has yellow in That's color. That is that right. particular part does not have chlorophyll in it. And when does that happen, children? When uh, efficiency of iron and aging, like how uh, so old when a leaf ages, the chlorophyll, the amount of chlorophyll that is present in the leaf, it starts decreasing, and ultimately that leaf, you know, comes out of that plant. Okay, so that does not mean that it does it. It has xanthophyll. No, it does not have xanthophyll. But what does it have? It does not have chlorophyll in it. And when it does not have chlorophyll, it is not able to undergo the process of photosynthesis. Am I clear? Chloroplast gives color to which part of the plant? What? By the entire. Chloroplast gives color to which part oh, yes. of the plant? Now the fruit. The uh, suppose your sunflower. Your sunflower is yellow in color, right? But is the no. stem also yellow in color? No. 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 Green in color, right? So this yeah. chromoplast, it will give color to the flowers. It will give color to the fruit. <laughs> it is associated with flowers and it is associated with the fruits. Okay. Similarly, chloroplast. A chloroplast is associated with leaves. Leaves are green in color. Right? Okay. Now, we come to the non-living substances, which are granules. They are small particles, they contain... Then what imparts colors to uh, the stem? Chloroplast. Because chloroplast is only green in color. Ma'am, but the stem does not produce food, right? 
The stem does not produce food, right? The stem, see, whatever is green in color, the stem, when it is young, the stem, when it is young, how is it, children? It is very uh, delicate, right? Only when it becomes old, it, the stem turns into wood, right? The wood is the non-living part of the plant. So when it is young, it is making food for the plant, when it is green in color. Okay? It now, can't consider stem as non-linear because it, it, it allows in like the transportation of various substances. Yes, it uh, it also, even roots help in the transportation of water, in the transportation of minerals. And how does it go through the leaves? It goes through the via the stem. Mom, but then the stem is living, right? The stem is living, but um, in these huge trees like a banyan tree, the stem is the wood. It is just a means through which it can... Um, it can the water and the nutrients can pass through the outer part well, the stem can respire part, right permit i'll clear your doubt the outer part is non living but the inner part where the xylem and the phloem is present you remember the xylem and the phloem yes yeah. ma'am yes. yes so the xylem and the phloem they are the living part of it okay and if you remember some of the parts of uh, the sclerenchyma the parenchyma do you remember parenchyma. some is dead some is not living Yes. So uh, this stem is yeah. basically like a holder for those. Yes. Yes. The outer part of the stem that is non-living. Okay. Because it is giving support. But inside everything is living because you know new and <laughs> cells have to be formed through which water and minerals have to be passed on to the leaves, to the branches. But stem respires. Huh? But stem also respires, right? Of course, because it is only due to the process of respiration that what is happening, ATP is released. And like how you need energy, even the cells, the plants, whatever is living, everything needs energy. So the stem respires living? Yes, yes, yes. Ma'am, okay. so the stem also has those stomata pores? What? The uh, stem respires, does it have the stomata pores? Yes, the stem also has pores. Ma'am, glycogen is related to insulin, right? Glycogen yeah. is related. How is it related to insulin? Can you throw light on that? Ma'am, because uh, last year when we were learning about glycogen, mm -hmm. uh, gly uh, glucagon used to be, you know, sorry, glucagon was another thing, but insulin, they used to make glucose into glycogen first. Yes. Insulin. Glycogen is something which Extra is stored glucose. inside your body. Huh. And doubt, whenever doubt, you need session. sugar, this glycogen is broken doubt, down. And doubt, doubt. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Now, uh, children, we come to some non-living no, substances, no, which are the granules. They contain food materials such as starch, glycogen and fats. Okay. Now, there is something which is called as vacuoles. Vacuoles are nothing but they are clear spaces in the cytoplasm. They are filled with water. Plant cells have huge vacuoles. Now, children, I'll tell you. I'll go to the first slide again. Now, can you see the central vacuole, students? Isn't that very huge? But as compared to this, see the vacuole which is present in an animal cell. Okay. That means the difference between a plant cell and an animal cell is that the vacuoles which are present in a plant cell, they are huge and the vacuoles which are present in an animal cell, they are very small and they are very tiny. Okay. Okay. Uh, plant cells have huge vacuoles and the liquid present in it is called as a cell sap. Animal cells have very few and small Back. Now, children, we come to a very important part of the cell, which is called as the nucleus. Can you see a nucleus here, children? The green part? Yes, okay. Now, I want every one yeah. of you to listen very carefully to what I explain. Uh, I'm clear, right, children? Yes, ma'am. Any disturbance yes, in hearing me? No, no ma'am, no disturbance. Now, it will be okay, okay to mute everyone else. Huh? Ma'am, your voice is breaking. Else. 
my voice is breaking but i think no ma'am please mute everybody else yeah, ma yes ma'am yeah actually mute ma'am your screen is freezed one mute all okay i have muted everyone now ma'am we can still temporarily how come page uh, one yes ma'am i am not muted i can format sir sir also call cytoplasm ma'am we can now is it okay yes okay now um have i muted everyone charvi have i muted everyone yes okay now children please carefully listen to me now what is a nucleus see this structure this circle is called as a nucleus it is a spherical mass located in the center of the cytoplasm it is there in the center of the cytoplasm now it is surrounded by a nuclear membrane can you see this uh, brown part children this is the nuclear membrane now this inside the nucleus like how we have cytoplasm inside a cell inside a nucleus what do we have we have a nucleoplasm okay so cytoplasm inside a cell inside a nucleus we have nucleoplasm okay now this nucleoplasm children it contains these chromatin fibers can you see maggy shapes uh, uh, rods inside this okay now these chromatin fibers during cell division the chromatin fibers become thick and are called as chromosomes now it is these chromosomes that are segregated into different cells and it is because of this that you get your identity now how i'll be discussing it in the next slide each nucleus has one nucleolus can you see this gray part this is the nucleolus and a nucleolus participates in protein synthesis okay that means children there what has happened earlier what was there the endoplasmic reticulum the ribosomes were responsible they were the sites for protein synthesis and a nucleolus it actually participates in protein synthesis okay now one minute now we are coming to chromosomes now children i'll draw something here how does a chromosome look like a chromosome is something like this can you observe this okay this structure this is called as a chromosome okay this is one chromosome now arush where is arush one minute i'll answer all your questions children now what did i tell you in the earlier side what i had one minute okay uh, children in the earlier slide i had told you that the chromatin fibers they get converted to uh, chromosomes so these structures these irregular structures they are converted into structures like this okay this is one chromosome that means children what is happening the one which is maggy shape they get arranged into these structures and this is one chromosome that means there are 46 now here in this slide i am telling you the number of chromosomes which are present in different species 
in humans we have 46 chromosomes we have 23 pairs of chromosomes okay now why 46 because 23 half comes from your mother half comes from your father now this ascaris it is a round worm the number of chromosomes that it has is only two garden pea number of chromosome it has is only 14 onion 16 maize 20 honeybee 32 so on and so forth there are some insects which have more than thousand chromosomes now children here i have in this table i have not put all the uh, species uh, of the chromosomes of which are present uh, the snapshot that i have sent in that snapshot there are different species and there are different number of chromosomes i want all of you to go through it after my presentation so that you will get an idea about the number of chromosomes which are present in different kind of species okay now we come to the next slide okay now some important information on chromosomes students just listen carefully these chromosomes that means the single structure which i have drawn here the blue shape they carry the genetic characteristic from the parents okay the chromosomes that you have right now it has come from your parents it is made up of chromatin that contains the hereditary units which are called as genes that means children on this chromosome i'm drawing something okay what are these these are nothing but they are the genes now genes are made up of dna you are learning you are uh, we are hearing so much about dna okay so genes what are they made up of genes are made up of dna that means the genes and not the chromosome determine the characteristic of a species now when i'm telling you that if someone says that you look like your father okay or you look like your mother that means that particular gene has come to you from your father or it has come to you from your mother okay so that is the meaning of gene and what is that genes those genes are present on this shape which is called as a chromosome okay now lions tigers and cats they have 38 chromosomes all the three of them lion tiger and cat they have 38 chromosomes but they still look different as different genes are located on different chromosomes can a cat behave as a lion can a lion behave as a cat can a lion be as timid as a cat no in spite of all of them having the same set of chromosomes but still they are different why because of these genes these genes they are present on different sides of the chromosomes and this is how they are getting the different structures okay why is it hanging okay now we come to a part which is called as protoplasm now what do you mean now children there are two stuff uh, two uh, terminologies that we have learned one is a cytoplasm and one is a nucleoplasm. Cytoplasm is present inside the cell. A nucleoplasm is present only inside the nucleus. Now, what is protoplasm? This is another terminology. Protoplasm is a living matter, the total substance of a living cell. That is the cytoplasm and the nucleus. That means whatever liquid material is present inside the uh, cell membrane and inside the nucleus that in total is called as a protoplasm now what are the elements which are there in the protoplasm the elements are carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen sulfur iron and phosphorus now these elements are in the form of now where did water come from water came when hydrogen and oxygen combined it lead to the formation of water okay how did proteins come from proteins came from nitrogen okay now what are proteins proteins are nothing but a combination of amino acids amino acids are nothing but they are all nitrogenous bases so children here what is happening is all these elements when they combine in different forms they give rise to water or they give rise to proteins they give rise to carbohydrates they give rise to fats and they give rise to 
mineral salts. That means a protoplasm. Why is a protoplasm said that it is a living matter? Because it contains all the materials which are present in the cytoplasm and the material which is present in a nucleus. Okay. Now, after the students, there is a concept which is called as a prokaryotic cell and a eukaryotic. We all know about it, right? A prokaryote, children, bacteria, blue-green algae, they are all prokaryotes, okay? Why are they prokaryotes, children? Because they don't have a well-defined nucleus. What do you mean by a well-defined nucleus? When a nucleus has a nuclear membrane, it is well-defined, which is present in a eukaryotic cell but a prokaryotic cell does not have a nuclear membrane it is just a single length of dna like this that means if this is a prokaryotic cell okay this is a prokaryotic cell the prokaryotic cell will have a cell membrane but it will not have a nucleus like this okay i'll a prokaryotic cell is something like this and it just has a single strand of DNA. This is a prokaryotic cell. Whereas, what is a eukaryotic cell? This is a eukaryotic cell. It will have a nucleus and inside this nucleus, it will have the nuclear membrane. So the difference is here, there is no nuclear membrane. Here, there is a nuclear membrane and it is because of this, it is a true cell. A eukaryotic cell is a true cell. A prokaryotic cell is not a true cell because it does not have a nuclear membrane. Okay. Now, they do have ribosomes. Yes, ribosomes are essential because they are the site for protein synthesis. Here, more and larger amount of ribosomes are needed because these eukaryotic cells, when they combine together, they lead to the formation of tissues. Tissues lead to the formation of organs. But is the same with the prokaryotic cell? No. So here, the ribosomes needed are very less. Here they have no other organelles. Here the organelles present are mitochondria, the endoplasmic reticulum, the chloroplast, etc. What are the examples? The examples are bacteria, blue-green algae, all the microscopic organisms. Here it is euglena, it is amoeba, and all plant and animal cells. Okay, now we come to the next slide. Okay, now um, children, here I have... Um, uh, these are basically these are examples like every activity of a living organism is the outcome of cellular activity what does this mean there are different examples here there are i guess nearly uh, 15 examples children i have not uh, written all the examples here this is going to be a part of your homework you have to go to the other examples and you have to you know remember them some examples here i I'll be explaining it to you. Now, what do you mean by this? Every activity of living organism is the outcome of a cellular activity. What does this mean? Cellular activity, the first example. Now, organisms grow due to increase in the number of cells. Right? That means, how are you growing? Are you of the same shape when you were three years old? No. You have grown, your height has grown. The internal organs have increased in size. Now, what is why is that happening? Because the number of cells are dividing. They are increasing in number. And it's because of this, you are growing. Now, repair of an injury or regeneration happens due to cell division. Now, suppose if you have a cut here on your hand, what happens? Some amount of blood comes out. But then does the blood come out immediate? I mean, just it... Does it come out and out and out? No. What happens here? Where the blood, where there is a cut, cells go there. They start dividing. And when they start dividing, it will block the path from where the blood comes out. So why is repair happening? Repair is also happening because of cell division. The number of cells go there. This, those cells divide. Okay. And which are those cells? Those cells are nothing but they are the platelets. Okay. Then, movement of your body. Now, the animals, they can walk, they can run, they can jump, they can swim. Why? Because they 
are doing this with the ability of the muscular system. Now, what do you mean by a muscular system? The muscular system is made up of nothing, but it is made up of muscle cells. And how are those cells, children? I had shown it to you in the last lecture. They are longer cells. Why are they longer? Because they need to contract, they need to relax. And when they undergo contraction and relaxation, this is how you are able to move. Okay, so everything children, everything happens because of one single cell, that single cell, you know, um, the there's an exchange of information and then all the cells start behaving accordingly. Now, another, another important example is blood in the blood vessels and food in the gut. They move as a result of muscle contraction. And how do the muscle contract? When one muscle contracts, it leads to the same, uh, you know, um, the same reaction is transferred to the other cell. Everything contracts and then the blood and the food is moved. And uh, now hopefully we come to the last slide. Okay. Feeding and nutrition. Now during feeding and nutrition students, what happens? The sensory cells on the tongue taste the food. The muscle cells of the jaw and the tongue help in chewing and swallowing. Cells of the digestive glands secrete enzymes. Remember the Golgi apparatus, they are secreting enzymes to digest the food. Then the cells of the inner lining of the intestine absorb the digested food and the extra food is stored as fat in fat cells and glycogen in the liver. Who is doing this? Okay, now children, just imagine the pathway. This is a pathway. Now, where has the food entered? The food has entered your tongue. Where in the tongue? The sensory cells, they will taste the food. Who has done that? The uh, sensory cells will taste the food. Then the jaw muscles, the cells which are present in the jaw, they will help in chewing and swallowing. The food goes inside your stomach, your intestine. There are these digestive glands. They will help in the secretion of enzymes. And with these enzymes, you will be able to digest the food. Yes, some food which is digested, you will undergo respiration, energy is released. Some food which is not digested, uh, which is um, digested, uh, what happens to that food? It is uh, stored in the form of fat. And that fat is uh, when you are starving or when you are not eating, you still get energy. How do you get that energy? You get it from the fat cells. Who is doing this, children? This is not done. Stop doing that. Okay. Now, children, the other examples which are there in the, I've shared the snapshot. Uh, you will do that as part of a self-study. Just go through the other examples. Now, what I'll do is I will uh, unmute you. Okay. Mm. So that uh, okay. now you can speak to Any questions? I have a doubt. Um, ma'am, 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 can I ask? Am I yes. What? Ma'am, like to try to solve as much as doubt as possible. Okay. Ma'am, I have a doubt. Yes. Ma'am, if humans have one more chromosome extra, become like do they have problems then? Yes. Now, uh, students, what is the number of chromosomes that you should have? You should 46. have 46 chromosomes. Okay. If there is something extra, it leads to abnormality. Like you must have seen uh, people with Down syndrome. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They have more. They have yeah, 47 set of chromosomes. Yeah. That is called gigantism mom. and uh, this yes. thing, uh, autism also related. Yes. Now, so, that is because of secretion of a growth hormone. Okay, yeah, hormone is produced more. 